Uh, so welcome everybody to uh, the third Cultural Connections of Fall 2020. Uh, please feel free to have your video up so Nicholas doesn't feel like he's all alone. Uh, you can have your audio off so you don't disrupt him, but it would be nice to see your face. Um, you can leave just like if you joined us last week, I see a few returning. So thank you for coming. Uh, for those I haven't seen before, uh, thank, welcome. Um, you can leave comments uh, or questions in the chat box uh, through during the uh, presentation. Uh, and then, or you can just wait till the end. There'll be a question and answer section. Um, and Nicholas uh, has agreed to run that as well. He'll read the comments or the questions uh, in the chat and answer your questions um, afterwards. So without further ado, uh, I'll try not to sound like I'm from Saturday Night Live or anything like that, but live from Brazil, we have Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start sharing my screen. All right. So let me know if you all can see it. Cool, thumbs up. Awesome. So, hi, oh. Before I start, I'm gonna be looking like a little bit up so I can see the presentation, so don't, don't mind me. <laughs> All right. Um, hi everyone, my name is Nicholas. I am from Brazil. And today I'm gonna talk about things that you probably didn't know about my country, right? Um, just a little bit about me first. Um, I'm currently a senior here at UNH. I am a computer science student and I'm from Sao Paulo City, Brazil. Um, I'm currently here in my city because I got stuck uh, due to travel restrictions. And I mean, it's not the worst place to be stuck on, but I definitely wanted to be back on campus this semester. <laughs> cool, so let's begin. Um, so instead of just like spitting, you know, random facts about Brazil, in today's presentation, I'm gonna try to walk you through um, the daily lives of Brazilians, you know, presenting like interesting aspects along the way. Um, that you may or may not know. During my years here at UNH, I presented about like many things such as politics, tourism, and even like a road trip across the country. But I never actually had, um, I never actually explained and walked through the busy lives, the busy daily lives of Brazilians. Um, I'll never forget the moment when I arrived at UNH and one of my best friends today asked me if I lived in the middle of the jungle because of the Amazon, um, that was funny. But um, so I guess today we're gonna hop in like the routines and walk through some of the facts uh, that may one day inspire you to visit this amazing country. Cool, so, oops, let me, so good morning everyone, um, or bom dia in Portuguese. Um, I guess a normal day has to begin in the morning and I mentioned normal because you all, you know, you have those days where you just sleep past 12 and you just wake up in the afternoon, don't even get breakfast. Um, <laughs> we all know that. Um, so starting in the morning, first things first, you have your Brazilian breakfast. And I, I believe br breakfast in Brazil is the most important meal of the day for everyone here because it's not like about all these different things that we eat, but it's, you know, it's how we start our day. Um, and the most important part of breakfast is coffee. So coffee is a must. If there's no coffee, there's no breakfast. <laughs> um, if you translate the word breakfast to Portuguese, which is café da manhã, the word café is, is mean, means coffee. So if you don't have coffee, you don't have breakfast in Brazil. Um, our coffee is very different. It's a little bit, it's much deeper and stronger than the American one. Um, it's similar to the Colombian one, if you have tried. Really good and really strong, <laughs> for sure. Um, another thing is that we are very used to eating a lot of bread in our breakfast. So we eat like toasts, um, especially like French bread and like French baguettes. Um, not much, not as much as like French toasts. We don't have those here. They're like the, the sweet ones. We don't usually eat them um, here in Brazil. 
And we also eat cheese bread, which is um, this really, um, it's bread with cheese, but you know, it's just made in, in the oven. It's, it's just really good. Uh, most people have those in breakfast or sometimes in the afternoon. Also Brazilians love, um, they, we, we normally also don't have like bacons, pancakes or eggs. Sometimes like up north, they do have eggs and they have some or other types of like omelets and stuff. But like here in the South, it's not very common unless you go to like a very special place and they probably have it there. Um, but it's definitely not common. Uh, another thing is that Brazilian loves fruits, tropical fruits. So like pineapple, uh, we also like papaya. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with papaya, but it's, it's really good and it's really extremely common here. It's actually my favorite fruit. And we also have those in breakfast as well as orange juice, uh, which is commonly present in all of like our tables. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I don't really like eating fruits in breakfast, but like most Brazilians do. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so after, you know, getting breakfast and pulling your, um, getting your stomach filled up, <laughs> we're going to go and you're going to, you know, probably drive to work, drive to school. And in Brazil, you're probably gonna notice that some cars are really, really clean. Like, not some, but like most of them because Brazilians love shiny and neat cars and inside and outside. Like, it's definitely something like that I can compare to like the US because like we here, we clean it like every day, even like on, on the inside, you know, and also like on the outside, some, sometimes like once a week, twice a week, or once a week or once in two weeks. Uh, but like when I got to America, it wasn't like, I would always like notice some like trash all over the car and things, you know, I mean, it's common and it's just like a really small detail in Brazil that people don't usually like. Um, so yeah, they, it's, it's really clean. Um, another thing is then whenever you're driving a road on the U S you, you can actually turn right on red, right? In Brazil, that doesn't exist. So if you do that, you're definitely going to get a ticket. <laughs> um, and also here, there's like, we have the stop signs, the same as the US, as you would assume, but no one actually respects them. Like no one's gonna stop all over and people usually don't see it. And it's kind of, it's, it's really like the, the contrast, like in America, if you don't stop and there's a cop there, you're definitely getting pulled over. Well, one of my mom first, um, first drove in the US, she like, she wouldn't stop in a stop sign. I was like, mom, you have to stop it. What do you mean? Um, she was like, wait, really? I thought it was just like some like, I don't know. I was like, no, if a cop sees you, you get pulled over. She was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, and also we like over there, cops are definitely, they're, they're probably not gonna pull you over, but you're gonna get a, like a ticket because there's a lot of like radars and such. Um, so these are all over the streets. So pullovers are like almost non-existing unless it's what we call the blitz, which is when like normally at night some cops like um, are like hidden and then they like pull you over to see if you're drunk or not. But like besides that, it's all everything is like electronic and um, you, you're going to get a ticket like mailed to your house and you probably don't even know. Um, and it takes some time for the ticket to arrive. Like it usually takes like two months and you're like, wait, did I really do that? It's, it's pretty <laughs> interesting. Um, and it's called like blitz because of like the, the term, the blitzkrieg in the German when, you know, um, when something appears from nowhere. Um, that's why the, the name is blitz, I guess. <laughs> cool. So a little bit, um, this is like driving in Brazil, but I want to compare and uh, with driving in my city. So I live in a very busy city. There's more than 12 million people living there. Uh, just like New York. And, you know, we all, we have traffic everywhere. Like sometimes it takes like 35 minutes for you to drive one mile. It's, it is pretty insane, especially in rush hours. Um, and the, I think another issue, which is like a, a big issue here is that motorcycles, as you can see in the picture, they can drive they can ride through like lanes like in the middle of the on the cars and that causes a lot of accidents because first if you're turning you're gonna have to check the other lane and also the middle part there to see if there's not a motorcycle just coming in like super fast 
and that actually scares a lot a lot of people and it's the topic that brings up like violence here in my city normally um there is unfortunately some type of violence and it's it's common uh so people like um, riding a motorcycle can actually like if you're driving like a very like um um busy not busy but like um dark street and such they might like try to rob you and it's pretty common like my aunt once got even kidnapped because of that and it was very tense and that's like the worst part about my city in all means like um but yeah and also you can see like there are people coming back from like the club because because nightlife is such a thing in my city and you're gonna see like in the next slides sometimes you meet friends coming back from parties even like on a monday um driving through so that's really common um so let's talk about let's stop talking about violence and traffic and let's go and like whenever you arrive at work or school brazilians tend to say hi in a very different way as uh, you probably know or you may not know uh we tend to like we're very famous for hugs and kisses when greeting someone so we tend to hug and kiss someone like on the cheek when greeting of course that's not happening during covid at least like that's i i think it's not happening hopefully it's not happening uh but yeah we do that everywhere it can be like in like gatherings family gatherings they're most mostly common it can be like at work sometimes if you know the person very well uh with friends every time with friends family you know and you do um you kiss and hug um and then handshakes a little bit more um formal i say depending on the context like if you just met someone at work and then you're probably going to do a handshake but other than that it's hugs and kisses everywhere um so let's stop talking about kissings and um let's go through like the attires like the the clothing um brazilians they value formal clothing at specific moments but at the same time they don't it's pretty weird but um people do judge a lot your clothes here and that's something different that when i notice in the us that people don't care too much at least that's my experience they don't care too much of what you're wearing but here in brazil people are going to look at you in a different way if you're like wearing some weird <laughs> clothes um but yeah but um that but that depends on different situations and like uh what i'm going to tell you next is that we love um wearing flip flops everywhere so they they tell they we have a common saying like we're the kings of flip flops cuz we wear them everywhere you know to go to like family gatherings to the beach and it's it's extremely common in all situations even sometimes in formal situations people wear flip flops and they wear a little bit like uh a little bit better flip flops but they comes in they come in all like sorts of types and colors and they have all these like stickers on it people just love because um once like um one the cities in brazil like the the most comes like the most populated cities are on the coast so people get out of their apartments they want to walk on the beach so it's just like convenient to have flip flops and wear them you know um yeah so it's it's more like a tradition here um and also it is strictly prohibited for you to wear them with socks so don't do that <laughs> if you want to wear them don't wear them with socks <laughs> otherwise people are going to look weird to you <laughs> like i said previously um cool so i think our morning was was had a lot of things going on so let's go to the let's go to the afternoon part of the day um so how we say here it's boa tarde um which is good afternoon so um the first thing that you're probably going to go to um if you're working it's probably going to go to a shopping mall in the afternoon because they hold this um the restaurants and all the food places that you want to go uh while uh, while you're working and it's pretty common here um shopping malls are like the place for you to go to like do your shopping and go to stores you know um they are they have like all sorts of like fast foods to five star restaurants um and they're normally like huge like every each one of them they're like there's like one every like mile away and they're extremely huge people love them um and that's the place that you go to eat to watch a movie for example if you want to go to the to the movies um 
also to like um, kids love playing on as you can see in the bottom picture there's like on the bottom on the ground level of every mall there's like a there's like a play thing for kids so kids can go there they can play and have fun uh, so it's pretty entertaining and then the parents they just leave the kids there and go shopping and normally like um, normally malls are like more attended during the afternoon when people want to eat after work or like um, and also like at night when people want to watch movies and go to like nice restaurants um, it's very different from um, I mean the US in a way that over there um, the stores are we normally have over there we have like stores for each thing so it's not you have malls too but they're like um, they're not as popular as just going to a store or just going to a restaurant somewhere um, but here everything's in the mall if you want to go do something you go to the mall <laughs> um, so you're probably gonna get lunch in the mall right so Brazilians tend to eat a lot at lunch it's probably like the complete meal of everyone here not the favorite um, and if you eat while well in lunch it serves you through the night easily and we tend to eat like various things especially like on what we call like a self-service restaurants where you weigh your food and you pay for that amount um, this is not only great for like workers and such, but it's amazing how food waste is reduced because you have to pay for what you consume there and people tend to not waste anything because they think they're losing money, uh, which is a, it's a great thing here. Um, and for example, there are even places, so the, what we call like the common Brazilian plate here is what you can see on the right. So it's like a plate with rice, white rice, brown, black beans, and then can be like lettuce, tomatoes, French fries, even like a fried egg on it. And it's extremely common and it's the cheapest plate that you can get here. Um, there's a government program, excuse me, that even serves it, um, that even like it only costs on certain like restaurants, only costs like one real, which is about 20 cents, you know, $20. Um, sense and it's extremely cheap and a lot of people just um, eat them because you know they're good and they're cheap so why not um, cool so you should definitely try it um, let me there's a picture here like how the people like wait their food at the restaurant so they grab it from like this um, from this like row of like a lot of like different foods there's like a lot of variety um, and then at the end you go and then you wait your food and you pay for that amount um, Cool. So as we're talking about lunch, I think it's important to mention like how our Sundays work here in Brazil. Um, it's a traditional day, like a family meetup. I know that's very common in a lot of places. So like we usually hang out with family, like we usually eat lunch at the grandma's house uh, and then like go to church at night and watch a soccer game. Um, I think it's one of my favorite days because at 4 p.m. every Sunday at least, I'm not sure now in COVID, but um, there's like different soccer games that you can watch and people just have a lot of fun with their family and watching that. Um, I think it's one of my favorite days. Um, and one thing we eat on Sunday, um, this is very common, it's our barbecue. Our barbecue, it's not like burgers or sausage, they're about like meat and like different types of meat, like filet mignon, um, like um, picanha is what we call here, is like the the back part of the, of the, I forgot the name of that. but it's like a, a very like good and um fat meat that we eat we also have our like types of sausage it's more like a german type of sausage in a way and we also like to put like everything all these sorts of meat in the grill together with uh, cheese and chicken too sometimes uh, and it's all cooked with coal and it's it's really good you definitely have to try it to come here to brazil <laughs> okay so a little bit more about food um it's important to mention like how diverse uh, food places and all the types of like food that you can get here, especially in my city, because it's a very like, there's a lot of people who live in here. So we eat all sorts of types of food from like Italian to Japanese. Um, we actually have probably more Japanese restaurants in my city than any other types of food combined. Uh, <laughs> the map like here shows um, two neighborhoods and the amount of restaurants, Japanese restaurants around it's like it's pretty insane and they're very common because I mean the food is very good and also you pay a fixed price and you can eat whatever you want um, and all sorts of like types of um, Japanese um, cuisine it's it's really delicious it's one of my favorites here too 
Um, but we also have like Italian restaurants, French restaurants, and all sorts of um, different types. Um, the one on the right is my favorite Italian here. It's called um, Haskell. And they have different types of pastas with different types of meat. A lot of like, um, like a, a bar of like salad that you can choose from. Uh, and it's self-service and it's, it's, it's really great. Um, it's not very expensive at all, especially if you are coming from the U.S. It's, you're going to find that it's pretty cheap. Um, but yeah, cool. So, well, we're not like only diverse on that aspect of like food, but we also, our population is really diverse, right? Um, I think Brazilians are defined as like a combination of multiple cultures and ethnicity. And I believe that's what like actually defines a Brazilian, you know? Um, so if you take a look at the ride, that's a painting from Tarsila do Amaral. She's considered one of like the uh, modernist artists described as the Brazilian painter who best achieved like Brazilian aspirations for modern style in Brazil. And the painting can be considered one of like the best records of the Brazil industrialization period where a lot of like workers, a lot of uh, people migrated here to work at the factories and such. And it's, uh, it's definitely like, it definitely built up our diversity from there. Um, and she also is like, um, as you can see, like the picture, the faces of the people on the right, they're really like distinct. So from like people from all colors and races represented side by side. And, and it should be like, it's, it's very common here. You find people like from, for example, in the middle, there's like Brazilian, Brazilian indigenous population. And sometimes they are around the city and it's very common uh, for them to like watch soccer games, especially they love soccer. And there are different types of like um, tribes and like um, indigenous population in Brazil. They're like the ones that go to the city, but they're also the ones um, that live in the Amazon that no one knows too much about it. And I've heard that like some of them even attack you if you go through. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's all these differences. And on the left here, you can see like, that's a very common practice for us. Whenever Brazil is playing soccer, it's for you to go on the streets with like random people and just watch the game and, you know, celebrate together. And I think that's really cool. And that um, shows a lot of our culture there. Um, so, but unfortunately, like there's sad differences too, like sad things that are present in our society. So if you take a look at this photo, the one on the top left, that's taken about like what, two miles from my neighborhood. And it underlines like the differences that co coexist together. So for example, on the left, you have the favela and favela is like a term for small houses, like grouped together in an area where people are like lower, a little bit like lower income than others. And, and as you can see on the right, there's like a huge uh, apartment there with like a pool for every like, every house or every apartment in there. So inequality is like, it's, it's, it's pretty big. There's like a pretty good gap in Brazil, unfortunately. Um, as on the, like the right, you can see like the public education on the bottom left versus like the private education. Um, going to like the school here it's very like public schools are not as great as private they don't provide too much resources for kids uh, to think like bigger and try to get into colleges and that's why um, private schools are extremely common in brazil um but yeah but unfortunately like during these times of like COVID and online classes a lot of the public schools are like they're not happening because um, people that live in like these lower income areas don't have internet or like a tablet so they can check out their classes. So it's pretty sad and people are trying uh, the new, the people are trying to like um, find a way through it. Um, but yeah, and as you can see, there's like the picture on the bottom left is the favela on Rio de Janeiro. Um, so they're pretty common too and they live side by side with like the big, huge apartments and, but yeah. Uh, just another thing on the, our school system, we don't have um, a lot of like much vacations in other countries. So we only have part of July and a little bit of the Christmas break, the winter break. And that's about it. Like, it's not like the entire summer, you know, um, which is, it's, it's pretty odd. And we're still like really low on compared to other educational systems um, in Europe and uh, the America. 
So yeah, but um, in contrast, our public health care system is really, really, really good. Uh, I mean, we have probably one of the best in the world because you have access for free treatments and very expensive medicine that people can't actually afford. And it's just free for you, you know. Um, it's called SUS, which is the single health system here in Brazil. Um, and it gives access like this expensive treatments and medicine that people wouldn't get otherwise. Like it's, it, it's really good. And it goes from like south of Brazil to like north of Brazil. And I think even you being a foreigner, you can go there and they're gonna like, they're gonna treat you too. So it's a, it's a really cool thing here. Cool. All right. The day was long. <laughs> so let's dive into the night a little bit. Um, so the way you say good night here, you say, or good evening, you say boa noite. Um, and it's the nightlife here in Brazil is one of the most popular. Um, so I think to start the night, we also love pizza, you know, um, and, you know, we, we just love it. And it's a little bit different, the Brazilian pizza. And we normally like they're normally split into various different flavors. Um, it's like handmade and it goes into like the brick um, oven. It's just like a flatbread. Um, but very delicious and they have like the sorts of types of ingredients, um, different ingredients on the, in the pizza as you can see on the left. There's like broccoli sausage with tomatoes there and they all love to like slice their pe the pizzas like that so people can eat differently every time they get a new slice. Um, the pepperoni pizza like Domino's and Pizza Hut also exists. They're getting very, they're getting more common, but people still like prefer the Brazilian traditional pizza, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is really good. Um, and we normally eat dinner, for example, um, we also have like this range. So people, there are people that eat dinner at 5 p.m. And there are people and they're like families that eat dinner at like 10 p.m. Like my family, <laughs> we always eat late. Um, but yeah. Um, Cool. And on the right side, you can see that's like one of the most popular ones, which is called Portuguesa, which is just the name, the same name as Portuguese pizza, which is composed of like hams, uh, onions, eggs, cheese, and um, even sometimes like cream cheese on the borders. People try to like put like flavors on the borders itself of the pizza. And it, it's really good. I think the, the closest place um, that I've been there close to Durham was in Flatbread in Portsmouth. Really good pizza too. And it's very, it's, it's kind of similar because of the brick oven and how it's made. But yeah, that's probably the, the most similar you can get without leaving that area. <laughs> um, but with dinner, it also comes with dinner like costumes. So we don't eat pizza with our hands. And that's a big no-no here in Brazil. We actually eat with knife and fork, and most meals actually we not we are not like uh, finger like we do, we don't eat like anything with our fingers besides burgers. I would say um, it's not it's viewed as a little bit like not very respectful. But, like people don't care too much, but some people will be like, oh, it's a little bit disrespectful. Um, and I believe that's one of the most um, remarkable things among my friends at, in the US that whenever we go out for dinner or pizza, I always, I mean, I cut my pizza with knife and fork and they just keep staring at me. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just, that's my culture. I just eat with knife and fork. I think it's better. They're like, no, you're doing it wrong. I was like, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I think I, I just like to maintain like my costume and I, I think it's pretty funny if I do that in front of them. Um, also, coffee is very like appreciated after dinner. People tend to drink coffee after dinner as well as like dessert. So normally it's like a coffee and dessert. Um, and like honestly, we love coffee like at any time. It can be like 2 p.m. or like 2 a.m. sometimes. Like my dad, he always drinks coffee at 2 a.m. almost every like other day, you know, and we just love that. <laughs> and he still lives, which is really surprising. Um, another thing is that whenever you go to a restaurant, you have to be prepared for like this lengthy meals because our meals are not quick. It's not like a 30 minute meal. It's normally about like sometimes around two hours if you go to a nice restaurant. So you really like sit in there and then you talk and then you eat more and then you talk and then you eat more. And so it's like that. And usually, um, I mean, never like waiters do not going to bring the check for you until you actually request them. So if you want to stay like eight hours in a restaurant, 
to just stay, you know. Uh, I mean, people have the sense, but like, um, waiters are generally not going to bring the checks on your table and make you like, like while you're eating, they bring the check and they're like, oh, take your time. Like that, that doesn't happen here in Brazil. Um, also, people do, do not tend to like bring like business aspects to like a conversation during a meal, um, unless like the host of like the, the dinner brings it up. Um, and then, but, but this like might happen in some cities. It's just like, a thing that people don't don't like to talk about too much. They talk about everything else, but like business. Um, so after dinner, there's a lot in Brazil, especially in my city, there's a lot of like this nightlife with parties and et cetera. So I would say the most, one of the most, like the country's most active nightlife, uh, at least before COVID, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah, like Brazilian stands on the top when talking about parties or like places to go and restaurants. Um, most stores, places are open like until late. Um, so like there's plenty to do and dance. Um, the drinking age here in Brazil is about 18. So if you go to like, if you have 18 and you, you can go, you can join the parties and you can also drink. Um, and also that comes with drunk driving rules are extremely strict here in Brazil too. So like if you go to a party and then you drink, people usually like they take an Uber or taxi home for sure. And this parties that happen, they're normally like pretty big. So like 100, 150 people, some, it's considered small parties and small gatherings. Um, but like everyone here loves like big parties, big gatherings. I'm not a big fan, to be honest, but like it's, it's how it goes here. <laughs> um, and parties like don't happen on only like close places either. So for example, during carnival on the top right, it happens like all over the streets and it's absolutely crazy. Traffic gets even worse, but like people are dancing like normally in like the streets and um, having fun. And so now you think about what like the way we greet people with hugs and kisses. Now try to think about what happens in all of these parties, you know. And yeah, I'm sorry. Like I don't, I don't actually appreciate much of this part of my culture, but it's definitely something that is there, and it's, I think it's interesting to show too. Um, and it's also very common, like parties can happen like everywhere like it's not party it doesn't have to be like the big thing where people like drink it can be like a small gathering at a restaurant um normally like on the picture below you have like um places like outside where you can sit and have fun with your friends um and yeah they, they can happen like everywhere um and also like if you're hosting a party for example um so like when you invite like Brazilians to a dinner or a party, you probably don't want to suggest them to bring um, foods or drinks. It's not like very common to do that. So you should be able to like, if you're inviting, you should be able to provide to all of them, which that makes it uh, very expensive for sure. Um, also like do not expect like anyone to arrive at time. People normally, they, they arrive late. They're not like the like the British but here they arrive late or sometimes they're even ones that arrive way too early which is <laughs> really interesting um but the big thing here is um be prepared to greet everyone in the party when you arrive and that's when you so whenever you greet right you have to kiss and hug so imagine you go to a party and there's like 100 people there and you have to greet and hug everyone so that's a big thing and normally like people try to avoid that sometimes by arriving a little bit early or like pro tip like get a table in the corner where you can't actually stand up you know and you're like oh okay hi how are you <laughs> so you don't have to hug and kiss every person because they're gonna come around hug and kiss every person before they actually sit down and that process can take an hour <laughs> it's it's a really um difficult task to be done in a party for sure <laughs> Um, and another thing is that you never indicate normally like the time the party will end. That's not, um, people don't usually do that, especially like on big party events like weddings and, um, yeah, other types of like gatherings too. Cool. And, you know, talking about parties, it, we should also talk about gifts. So like whenever you invite Brazilians to a dinner or party, you do not, um, you do not like you can buy you can present a gift for example like in a social media you can give like um anything so people value a lot of like good quality wine um can be whiskey books you know name brand pants people here have a i don't know why 
because I don't like it, but people give a lot of pens away, like as gifts, like expensive pens. I mean, I think it's kind of cool, but um, it, it's, it's just extremely common here. Um, and also like sometimes if you have like this business party or like gathering and you buy like this really expensive gift, that might be viewed as a bribe, you know, in that relationship. So you just have to be careful to not buy something very expensive and not buy something very cheap that people are gonna look at, oh wow. Um, and also there's like this flower situation where um, you can bring flowers to the host of the party too, like people normally do that. But if it's a big party, you actually can take the, um, they actually have these tables where they have like um, a different type of flower in every table and you can actually take that at the end of the party and bring it home. So sometimes you give flowers and sometimes you receive flowers, even, you know, it, it's pretty interesting. But that normally happens on like, um, like um, weddings and quinceaneras and, and like all this other types of big parties. Um, but yeah, I think after like here, I think one thing that you probably noticed during this presentation is that Brazilians love food. Like we, we love like, um, any type of food. So if I go like um, people generally on like this um, places that you go outside, they normally, there's normally served like every like different types of foods and drinks. And it's just, it's really common to have like um, to Brazilians to eat like any sort of foods and different types at the same place. So it doesn't have to be like um, on, for example, Japanese restaurants where you just eat sushi and stuff like these restaurants that are normally outside, they serve every every single type and people just love it. I think it's definitely something um, really embedded in our culture. Um, cool, so I think that's about it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm now gonna hop in any questions that you might have. You can speak up or you can drop them in the chat and I'm gonna give it a read right now. Let me go back here. I have a question. Yeah. What's your favorite food in Brazil? My favorite food, but like Brazilian food or like a different type of food? Brazilian like um, food, your favorite dish. Okay. Um, I think my favorite Brazilian dish would be what we call, um, um, let me see, there's so many different types. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we call it like the feijoada, which is like black beans with like sausage on it. And also you eat it with rice. I think that's my favorite Brazilian dish. But, but if you're talking about other dishes, Japanese is my favorite. Sounds yummy. <laughs> um, let me try to, I can't, let me try to read the chat real quick. I'm going to stop sharing for one second. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, your English is super good. Did you just learn that from being at UNH for four years or do they have English classes in all your schools? Um, when I, so I had English classes. So I studied here in Brazil. I studied in a bilingual school. So we had half English and half Portuguese. And yeah, I think that's, um, that's why my English is a little bit like, it's good. Um, and also like we had, all the subjects in English too here. So you would have like math and Portuguese and you would have math and English. Uh, so it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Ah, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's... All right, I can see. Um, so do kids have coffee for breakfast too? Yes, they do at least. Um, the ones so normally here um kids i would say from like age what seven eight above they have coffee if they like it it's more like it's it, it differs by family to family i really enjoyed coffee since i was young so i always had coffee for breakfast too um but i do know like kids that they don't drink coffee and uh, but like most of them start early and they yeah they do have coffee for breakfast Um, let me see here, the papaya is in... <laughs> um, do you feel that the government corruption in Brazil in contributing to the inequality is contributing to the inequality in the country? 
What are some things the Brazilian people are doing to combat corruption? Totally. Uh, <laughs> um, definitely the past few governments, people definitely, they weren't doing as much to combat inequality. Um, I mean, it's a really hard thing to measure. And I think um, it's very like, um, how can I say? It's, it's, it's very hard because inequality here comes from various different reasons. People do try to like, um, they establish like some laws to like try to balance that out, especially when going to college and such. But there's also a lot of people that are against those laws. Um, well, yeah, they, they try to do things and, but um, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Like, um, so yeah, like a, one example would be like to um, people from like the minor, the, the like people that are, from different races here, like the minor, the, the small groups, they have like a portion of like, how can I say, like a percentage of entrance in like common exams for college. So they established that like, for example, 10% of um, Latinos, for example, are guaranteed to pass, you know, so that focuses a lot. Um, so those are one of the things that they try to do um, if I go, yeah. and. Some people think it's good, some people think it's bad. It's, it really varies. Um, hopefully I answer your question. <laughs> um, Lauren, there are more than 30. Okay. Um, do I read, should I also like read the comments out loud and or only if there are questions I answer like it doesn't, okay. Um, Cool. If I'm missing a question, please let me know. I can see a lot of comments. Um, <laughs> so that as an Indian, I can relate to non-existing traffic rules. <laughs> that's, oh, that's cool. I love papaya. Cheese bread looks yummy. Um, yeah, it's a suggestion. Love the idea of paying for food by weight, for sure. Um, what do you miss most about Durham now that you're stuck at home? Huh. One thing that I miss a lot is the juicery. I love going to the juicery and getting smoothies and such. Like I would go like every day and also to Dunkin' Donuts. I love the iced coffees and we don't have, that's not common at all here in Brazil. We always drink hot coffees. Um, that's something I, I think I forgot to mention. It's normally, we always drink hot coffees. It's extremely uncommon to drink iced coffees here. But yeah, I, I really like them too. I think, I mean, food wise, those are the two things, but I definitely miss um, being on campus and miss my friends and, you know, just the overall campus experience. I think that's, that's something I really miss. Dunking's closed now, so you're <laughs> missing out. Oh my God. Actually? Wow. Oh no. Business opportunity for iced coffee? Sure. I think if you can maybe like convince some people to like, um, I think you have to like, tell like you have to tell them to taste before and like try it really hard for them to taste because people when you talk about iced coffee here it's more like oh no it's way too cold I, I that doesn't sound good and I was like that before I tried and it was it was delicious um do you find any good Brazilian food while you, you were here yes I did I found in um, Boston Massachusetts and there's a place called Fogo de Chão which is a Brazilian barbecue place. It's expensive, really expensive, but I went there once um, with my family um, and it was really, really good. It's the same, almost the same exact cuisine and they have all these different types of meats and salads and it's really great. I think that was one of the only ones that I, um, that I found. There are, other, some, there are other places in Massachusetts where they have Brazilian um, food places there um but i've never been to one other than the one in boston yeah. um good food um does it cost money to go to public university in brazil no so public universities here are very very competitive um it doesn't cost any money so that's why like uh and the exams are like pretty hard and yeah it's it's free of cost um for sure um what would you show yeah it's really good <laughs> Have you had some Guaraná since you have been home? Um, yes. Um, so, I, yeah, I have it here 
uh, like some like on the weekends and but like the us we ordered guarana in amazon for one of the cultural connections or two of the cultural connections people can try it out it's a really good drink i highly recommend you all try it is a it's guarana it's a fruit for those of you that don't know that grows in the amazon it's like a looks like an eyeball or red eyeball um and it's, it tastes really good it's like a soda with made of that fruit and it's really good for sure <laughs> did you learn how to do coding in school or did you teach yourself? Okay. Um, so as I talked in the beginning, I'm a computer science student. Um, this is a hard question because I did learn most, of, like I did learn the basics from school, but I also, I did teach myself some subjects that I work on with today. Um, but yeah, I think, um, <laughs> I think coding is about like, um, you can, you, you can teach yourself, but you can also learn a lot from school, um, especially in the first years you learn like um, a lot. So if you, if you wanna take a coding course, like, and like and you need any suggestions, let me know, I can try to help you. Cool. Let's see if any more questions show up. <laughs> I have one for you, Nicholas. Um, yeah, so you've, you've done several cultural connections presentations. They've always been in the entertainment center in the mob in person. Just curious what it's like to start thinking about what you want to present on and like actually living in your home country when you're when you're presenting. Does it kind of feel different? And I don't know, is your thought process different with this one? Um, definitely. I think it, it definitely feels different. Um, it's <laughs> Um, how can I say it's it's different like in good and a bad way like in a bad way because I can't be there standing and it's a whole like new ex other experience of people being there and you know asking questions um, and being in person uh, but also like here is great because all the more people can come and join um, and I think like I'm not sure if it affected too much my thought process um I think maybe yes, because I thought more about the actual like routine of a Brazilian instead of thinking of other aspects of it, um, at least for this presentation. And yeah, it's 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 really weird <laughs> to be here and you know, um, yeah, it's definitely something that we're getting used to now. Yeah, all these online things. Maybe you had like a lot of examples you could think of because you're like living it every day. Go yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I, I, yeah, that definitely, um, some things that happened to me that definitely like helped through the presentation. So I like can remember things that are like super common to me that I don't like, I don't usually like think about it, you know, maybe like new to other people. Hey Nicholas, I just wanted to say great presentation. I loved it. Um, I just loved hearing like, there's so many similarities between my Portuguese culture and your Brazilian culture, you know, the whole having to greet the entire family when you get to a party. I think you did miss though that that happens on the way out too. So you have to plan in, at least in my culture, you have to plan in an hour before you leave to say goodbye to everybody before you leave. And I'm really jealous of the Irish and their Irish goodbye. And I've tried to implement it many times, but I've been called out on it by my family and, and yelled at. For, for leaving without saying goodbye to everybody. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's very true. Like the goodbye here, it's it's definitely the same way. You have to like say goodbye to everyone too. So you actually hugging and kissing like a lot of people too. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty common and you definitely have to go one hour before. Um, you have to plan out your way yeah, out. I remember sure. as a kid when we were at like a family's house, my parents would say, okay, guys, it's time to go. And we used to be like, all right, we got 45 minutes still to play while they say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But yeah, that's definitely um, something present in our culture. Oh, cool. All right. Anyone have any other last question? Um,
Well, if we don't have any other questions, I will leave it here. Thank you, Nicholas, for a great uh, Cultural Connections third presentation of Fall 2020. Um, thank you all. And uh, very entertaining. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we actually have one next week as well, our fourth presentation. Um, and our presenter actually is here. Uh, well, she was. Hold on. Yeah, she is here, but she, her video is off. Kieran is going to be uh, talking about presenting about uh, shamanism in Mongolia. Uh, very interesting. Um, so if you can, it's the same place, uh, same time, uh, next week, Friday at three, um, where you get to learn about Mongolian shamanism. So um, please, I, I, I don't know if I'm giving it any justice. So Kieran, if you're gonna, if you wanna talk about it a little bit, feel free, but uh, we'll also be here next week uh, to learn all about it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks, Good everyone. job, Nick, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick, good job. <laughs> thank you. Good job, Nicholas. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. 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 Bye